Hey everyone, Ryan O'Shea here. It's been a while, so I wanted to give you an update about what's been going on at Grindhouse Wetware. First, an update on Northstar. You may remember Northstar version 1, the implant with five red LEDs that shine through the skin. This device was first implanted in October of 2015. It's been installed in about 10 beta testers since then. The results of these early tests were extremely promising, but Grindhouse was not content with simply having red lights under the skin. So that was quickly followed up with the prototype of Northstar version 2. Here's Marlo Weber to tell you a bit more about that. This is, yeah, this is the Northstar 2 that was developed by Grindhouse Wetware over the past uh, three years. It builds upon the original Northstar without adding many of the features that people requested, such as rechargeability and um, various sensors and very bright lights. And it's uh, Bluetooth controllable, so it can interface with your phone or other digital technology. It is uh, primarily intended for gesture control of devices, so you'll see it when bumped or prompted by some kind of interference, it will glow green and start recording movement data. Yeah, see, it's recording the gesture right now. Um, it has a full 9 degrees of freedom IMU, so it's capable of recording acceleration, um, rotation, like gyroscope data as well as a very sensitive magnetometer that can pick up the Earth's magnetic field direction, it can be used as a compass, and it can sense the position and uh, direction of finger magnets out to about a foot away from the device. So, in many capabilities, can replace the sensing action of the finger magnets. Bluetooth uh, interaction can be used to relay that data to other devices. Um, so you could, you could network a few of these to like respond visually to its sensors, or it could be used to synchronize to music and flash its lights in time with the beat, which is one of, one of my favorite applications. It also has a small memory, about half a megabyte, as well as another half a megabyte of flash memory on the Bluetooth chip. So it can be used to uh, store small files or to store, like, to log data recorded by the device. And when the software is complete, we should be able to change the lights to just about any color you like. I actually have a number of sensors on this. Um, it has a very accurate thermometer that can measure down to 0.1 degrees Celsius. Enabled by its awesome NRO52 chipset, we have the ability to flash new code to the device wirelessly. So you, we wanted to open this out to the community so you could write your own software and you could send it over the device. You can write all kinds of custom applications. Um, it will get better over time as people come up with brand new ideas we never even thought of and write their own software to implement that or they're able to you know, fix bugs on their own. It's kind of a little bit, you know, designed to fit the uh, bump on the back of your hand. And here's the Northstar version 2 prototype. As Marlo mentioned, this one is rechargeable, programmable, and has Bluetooth capabilities. It has various sensors, built-in memory, and has the ability to enable gesture control of Internet of Things devices. The lights are able to be controlled remotely and could even sync up with sensor data meaning that it could be used as a compass or could synchronize with music. So you might be wondering how you can get this device. But there's a problem. There's a reason that, despite the public demand for these products, customers that are ready to place orders, and investors that are ready to cut checks, we haven't had a commercial release of Northstar version 1 or version 2. And that reason is the very serious questions around the regulation, legality, and liability of elective human augmentations. Here in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration regulates medical devices. It is unclear if the implants that Grindhouse is designing would fall into this category. According to the FDA, a medical device is, quote, an instrument, apparatus, implement, machine, contrivance, implants, in vitro reagent, or other similar or related article, including a component part or accessory, which is number one, recognized in the official national formulary or the United States Pharmacopeia or any supplement to them. That definition doesn't apply. Number two, intended for use in the diagnosis of disease or other conditions or in the cure, mitigation, treatment or prevention of disease in man or other animals. Grindhouse or its affiliates may want to step into this space in the future, but that currently doesn't describe Northstar. Or number three, intended to affect the structure or any function of the body of man or other animals, and which does not achieve its primary intended purposes through chemical action within or on the body of man or other animals. This definition could go either way and there doesn't seem to be an official position that the FDA takes on these devices.
but they need to take a position. And that position needs to take into account a few things. First, we as a society could decide to strongly regulate augmentative implants. We could make sure that they are proven safe and effective before they reach the market, and make sure that only licensed medical doctors are performing the implant procedures. However, many people have fears that this augmentative tech could further divide humans. Those with money and access to resources would be able to afford the augmentative tech, and those without those resources might not. Another option that would be that we leave augmentative tech largely unregulated. They could be treated as piercings, transdermal implants, and aesthetic implants are today, and the procedures could be performed by trained body modification professionals, many of whom have extensive experience doing similar work. This would make the devices significantly cheaper and significantly more accessible, eliminating some concerns about the potential divides between the haves and the have-nots. However, a lack of regulation could make them much more dangerous. Regardless of what path we choose, we as a society need to understand that there will always be an underground black market for augmentations. I don't see any way to stop that. And we should also consider what the ramifications might be when someone is severely injured or killed as a result of their decision to receive an augmentative implant, a situation which seems inevitable. It's going to happen. And when it does, we need to make sure that the response is a reasonable one. I could talk about this subject for hours, and I have a lot more to say on it. But for now, let's move on to how we're addressing these issues today. Even though there's no clear path to market for the North Star device, the people behind Grindhouse Wetware have not given up. This biohacking technology is coming to market, just not in the way you might expect. In 2017, much of the team behind Grindhouse Wetware spun out a related but distinct entity known as Livestock Labs. Livestock Labs is essentially making a new and improved version of our prototype Circadia device, which is capable of monitoring physiological metrics from the body. However, this device is designed specifically for cattle. I spoke with Grindhouse member and Livestock Labs Chief Operations Officer Amanda Plimpton on the Future Grind podcast to find out more about their work. Here's an excerpt from that episode. With Livestock Labs, several of the Grindhouse Wetware Collective people came in, as well as a couple of Australians who indicated that the Australian market was ready for some biotechnology. They were ready for implants, but for cattle. They saw a very good need for the health and welfare monitoring of livestock. And so they got together and showed that there would be some grants and there would be some money there and that there was interest. And so the company with Livestock Labs was formed in order to create the product that is called EmbediVet. And the EmbediVet product is an implant that goes into the neck of livestock and it collects their heart rate and their temperature, their pulse, their blood oxygen saturation level and activity levels and, and sends that out. And then it gets crunched up by the servers and alerts and usable data are put onto the phones of the farmers so that they're able to know if an animal is getting a little bit of a fever spike, they can go pull it off of the herd and treat it right away before it spreads illness to the others, gets a distress alert if the calving's gone on too long, that sort of thing. We're working with a couple of different farms and then a couple of different universities in order to do various trials. And we're basically moving through the stages of do your internal trials, do your research trials, do your commercializing trials. And so we're just kind of moving through those stages, making sure that we're constantly improving the product and getting as much feedback as possible to make it as a usable and pleasant experience for the animals and the people. Interestingly enough to me, at least, when we talk about the Embedi Vet and what it does, there's a large number of people who before would have gone, ew, you want to put an implant in a person, who are now saying, so does that work in people? I, I feel like there's some sort of mental shift for a lot of people where if it's been proven out in the animals, then maybe it's okay for the people. And I just, I found that fascinating. To find out more about Livestock Labs, you can listen to the full episode at futuregrind.org. You can also find Future Grind on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, and all major podcast directories. We've had interviews with other well-known figures in human augmentation, including Tim Cannon, Emil Grafstra, Rich Lee, Left Anonym, and more. 
But Future Grind is about so much more than human augmentation. We explore the ethics and impacts of emerging science and technologies, and start conversations around the hard topics. Other episodes focus on artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, DIY bio, robotics, life extension, and more. And currently, the small amount of money that Future Grind receives goes towards keeping Grindhouse Wetware's mission alive. If you're able and you'd like to support our work, please visit futuregrind.org forward slash support. We have lofty goals and anything helps. Please subscribe and help spread the word. A few smaller updates. Grindhouse has been getting a lot of press attention. Many projects are still in development, so you'll be seeing more of us in print and on screen in the near future. Justin Wurst, who you might remember from being featured getting his North Star implant on MTV's True Life, is currently in the United Kingdom where he's pursuing an advanced degree. Behavior, the artificial intelligence startup that I co-founded in 2017, in part to help make sense of all of the data that implanted devices will generate, has had some exciting developments. We've been awarded an SBIR grant from the National Institutes of Health, and we've also received funding from the National Science Foundation and Carnegie Mellon University. We've completed the prestigious Alpha Lab Startup Accelerator program and were recently named one of the top 10 teams in the third and final round of the global $5 million IBM Watson AIX Prize. Our goal is to predict and intervene in human behavior to promote positive health outcomes. And our first initial goal is to predict and prevent opioid relapse for those currently in recovery. Follow along with me on social media to stay in the loop on this. That's all for this Grindhouse update. Please make sure to subscribe and share this video with your friends. We'll keep building and we'll see you next time.